Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another video from inside the EVE Echo's final test. Today we're going to be looking at cosmic anomalies, what they are, how they work, what you should be doing, and what you shouldn't be doing, because for the love of all that is holy, I am getting fed up of watching people destroy bases. We're going to explain all of that in this video. Now before we jump in, of course, if you do enjoy this video or find it useful, let me know by hitting a like on it. Consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more Evil Echoes content already on here and a lot more yet to come. And let me know what topics you'd like to see me cover in future videos, either by commenting down below in the comment section or by finding me on different social media, including the Catskull Cartel, as shown along the bottom of your screen now. Come join us on that Discord, it's a great way to have a little uh, bit of a chat with you guys. Anyway, let's have a look at cosmic anomalies. So I'm here in half in our little base system at the moment, having a look around with my Kestrel. Now down the right hand side of the screen, you can see that there are three icons there. There are four state, uh, four gates or stations, that's stations, sorry, four stations. There are seven asteroid anomalies and eight combat anomalies. Now if we tap the eye, that will drag this out and you can see here that we have the uh, the all on here. We can filter that now down to what we want to have a look at, which is cosmic anomalies. Now when you're looking at cosmic anomalies, you'll get a list like this if there are any in your system. Now to explain what all of these different names and numbers mean, ultimately the Angel Cartel means that's who you're going to find in that particular anomaly. In the case of the Angel Cartel, they are a Minmatar faction. Um, they use projectile turrets mainly, sorry, cannons as they are now in EVE Echoes, still getting used to that. They use cannons mainly um, and will use Minmatar ships like, say, stabbers for cruisers and then thrashers, slashers, rifters, that kind of thing for their frigates and destroyers. So that's the kind of thing you'd expect to have around here. If you then look, you can see that it'll have either large anomaly, small anomaly, or medium anomaly. Now, that is the size of the anomaly, which means the amount of ships present within it. If you think of an anomaly as basically it's what your scanners have picked up, and it's an unusual object. It's not something like a planet or a moon or a base. It's something that isn't usual. So in this case, a small anomaly means there are a few small, uh, a small, a, a small blip on your radar, so to speak, of angel ships. A large one means there are a lot of ships in that area, so expect a long protracted fight if you head into a large anomaly. Now the number next to them is then the tech level of that anomaly. The higher that number, the more difficult it is. The more advanced the ships are going to be, the more powerful their weapons are going to be, and the more like unusual toys they're going to bring out, things like E-War modules, that kind of thing. So do expect all of those in there. Now if, as we look down that list as well, you'll see there are a couple of other types, notably the Cartel Base and the Scout Anomaly. Now, scout anomalies right now are the thing that everyone is talking about. These are um, where you find data cores. Um, you can head out to these. You fight through multiple rooms, so to speak. You'll arrive, and I'll show you later on. You arrive, and there's a uh, like a warp gate that you can jump through, and it'll take you to a special room for that scout anomaly, and you can go through those piece by piece. The base at the top, however, these are ultimately what spawn anomalies. So if I jump through to the base, first of all, we can have a look at what this is and what it does. Now, of course, I'm in my Kestrel, and we do have some... Uh, we ha we've got another group of uh, players in this system at the moment who have been quite aggressive, so I do hope I don't encounter them too closely, as I may have to warp away at, at risk of losing my Kestrel. But there we go. So ultimately, here we are at the Angel Cartel base. Now, the base itself has defences, it has turrets and all kinds of crazy stuff around it, and it is well guarded. As you can see here, there are thrashes, there's a burst, um, and a couple of stabbers as well. Now, I'm going to move away from this because I don't want to just be sitting around here talking, um, whilst ultimately I'm going to be getting shot at by various different Angel Cartel uh, figures. You can destroy the base, but for the love of goodness, don't. Because what, you, what, what bases do is they create anomalies in the system. Uh, if you leave a base, it gets stronger, so you find like an Angel Cartel base 1, um, that will eventually become a base 2, a base 3, a base 4, a base 5, and on it, on, on it goes. And as long as there is a base in the system, the anomalies will keep spawning at a decent rate. So if I go back to the uh, Cosmic Anomaly list, you'll see here that as long as that Angel Cartel base is currently at level 5, as long as that's still around, other anomalies will spawn, any ones that you complete will refresh um, and allow you to go through there. If you destroy a base, then all of the cosmic anomalies, once they're cleared, are going to come back at cosmic anomaly level 1 and you've got to level them all up again and it's a pain. 
It's a pain. So if you spot a base, an Angel Cartel base, or a Gurstus Pirates base, or a Serpentis Corporation base, or whatever pirates you happen to be fighting in your area, leave it the hell alone. Yes, theoretically there are some bigger, nicer ships in there. You tend to get more cruisers, for example, um, in an Angel Cartel base 5 than you would in even a large 5. Um, but just don't. You get a bit more money for doing it, but it's not worth it for the fact that you then have to replace absolutely everything. Now, to talk about a scout anomaly, let's head out to this one and we'll have a look, because as I said, there are some differences. Normally, you just come into an anomaly, you kill all of the ships that are there. If you've watched my Kestrel fitting guide, you'll have seen me do that in exactly this sector. In fact, just before I recorded this video, you'll have seen me start clearing an anomaly there. Um, ultimately, you sit in that anomaly, you shoot everything down, and then the next wave appears and you shoot them down, so on and so forth. When you come to a scout anomaly, though, you will find that you don't really tend to find necessarily just endless waves of enemies. Instead, you find this thing, which is an acceleration gate. Now, if you either tap on the acceleration gate itself, or if you find it in the overview, you've got the little icon there, um, and activate it, you can use this to jump through to another area. It's like warping, it's like warping to a marker, basically, but rather than warping between systems or warping to a station, you're warping to wherever this particular marker is. So here we are, we're going to come through to the Scout Anomaly level 2, this is kind of the second room of the entire thing, and again you can see here, this one has been cleared out. Um, there should be, if I go to all and look for the nearby, there should be uh, hopefully another jump through, if not this may have just been a small um, anomaly that didn't have any that didn't have much in it and those hostiles yep yeah, it looks like those hostiles have cleared it out which is quite sad i was hoping to showcase a bit more than that for this one but that's what those gates do now what i'm going to do now is i'm going to jump back to our station and showcase what those actually give you so if i jump back to the republic fleet and dock there we're going to have a look at the warp cores what they look like and talk about ultimately what they do we are now docked at half 10 moon 10 republic fleet assembly plant this is where the catskull cartel is currently holding its base of operations um, as i said this is likely not the final position for launch and um, just because i don't want people to sort of like gimp us ahead of time but it's just a nice place it's got a load of stuff going on around it now if i go into the inventory and down to our corporation hangar and scroll through all of the juicy 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 stuff you will see at the bottom of this, here we are, data cores. Now these come in all kinds of different types. For example, data core electromagnetic physics, or rocket science, or mechanical engineering, or indeed, Minmatar uh, starship engineering. Now these can be used with reverse engineering to uncover all kinds of various different blueprints um, which are going to use for building different parts of ships and for uh, the actual ship blueprints themselves. Ultimately there are all kinds of stuff and you can see that the uh, the guys have been very busy here at the Cascal Cartel. We've got quite a few of these uh, going at the moment and I see there we finally have the burst 2 blueprints. I'm hoping someone can build one of these for me because I want to be doing a video on how logistics ships work. So logistics is one of my favourite things to do in EVE. Um, so 100% I want to get that built so I can showcase to you guys. But these come ultimately from the data cores um, or from reverse engineering ships as well. So for example, if you find um, wreckage of, if I scroll back up here, you can see there's a load of Mimitar and Kaldari ship debris that we've got around here. If you reverse engineer those, you may find blueprints either for ship parts. For example, if you reverse engineer Mimitar ship debris, you may find things like cannons or shield hardeners, that kind of thing. Um, you may even find a blueprint for the actual ship itself, like a thrasher or a slasher, so you can start building those. I'll do, do a proper video on reverse engineering later on, but those data cores are why you keep an eye out for the scout anomalies. Now, of course, as well, it's not just the scout anomalies that are important. If you watch the Kestrel video, you'll have seen that when I was out there, I'm doing standard combat anomalies and getting an awful lot of money from bounties. And what I didn't showcase in that video, because I didn't get the chance to, is that if you loot a ship, well, actually, I kind of did. I, I, I got that, uh, that adaptive hardener. If you loot the ships as well, you can get some really expensive and quite nice gear. Um, so, for example, when I did that last run um, with the Kestrel um, up in that particular in that particular anomaly, let's go into the Kestrel's hangar itself. Here we are, the Mark V Adaptive Invulnerability, uh, Invulnerability Field. That is a fantastic little upgrade that you will not find on the market at the moment. I'm reluctant to sell it, I'm going to hold on to it, use it in a couple of ships, but that's the kind of loot you'll find by doing those cosmic anomalies. In addition to the straight up loot of just whatever is left on any ships you destroy, of course you also get the bounties for 
um, destroying the, any ships, any of the pirates that are in there. So they're well worth doing. But again, for the love of all that is good, please do not destroy bases. If the one thing you take from this video is that you should stop destroying um, the pirate bases, Cosmic Anomaly bases, if that's all you take from this video, then my job has been done. Anyway, folks, that covers everything that I wanted to say about Cosmic Anomalies. Do get out there, do blow up some stuff, make a ton of fun and profit, um, get yourself some really cool ship parts, l make a load of money very quickly and easily. Do it in something like a Kestrel. Go watch the Kestrel video if you haven't already. You'll see how you can do that. Anyway, folks, thank you ever so much for watching. Let me know what uh, kind of content you'd like to see me make in future, what topics you'd like me to, to answer, what questions you have about the beta and the game itself. Let me know in the comment section down below or on the Catskull Cartel Discord or Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, any of those things you see on screen now. Otherwise, thanks for watching, happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!